Hi, you guys. Bonus content from Pop Culture Crisis. I'm your host, Miracle Sam. And right next to me is Brett. Uh, that's my, me. I'm Brett. You can find me on social media at Brett Dasovic. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this now because we're doing bonus content and I'm just uh, ma- I'm mixing everything up. We're going uh, in a different order. We're going yes. to screw it all up today. Yep. You're going to get a reckoning. Uh, that, I, that, I don't think that's actually the right word for, no, that, it's not. for, for that segment, but we have another, we have a guest host today for this. Oh, by the way, this bonus segment is we are going to be doing a review of the, uh, v- of the brand new movie from Kenneth Branagh called Death on the Nile based on the character of Acuo Battle. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Hercule Poirot, if you're from mm-hmm. uh, Minnesota, uh, based based on the famous <laughs> Agatha Christie novels. And we have a guest host who came with us to see the movie tonight. Introduce yourself, sir. Hey there, I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm really glad to be here tonight. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the movie. Yeah, j- just yeah. En- just enjoyed it. Just enjoyed just it. Enjoyed we'll it. go into that. So mm-hmm. sometimes that's all you all you can ask for. Yep. Um. So uh, I thought we would just. I, I want to get right into like the description and everything involving the movie, uh, as far as like titles, names, and everything. So this movie is from Kenneth Branagh, uh, mm-hmm. was the director, and it's based on a Hercule Poirot story called De- that's called Death on the Nile. And this screenplay was done by Michael Green, and I, I looked into Michael Green. He did uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh, mm-hmm. And a couple of other fairly interesting projects, and he also worked with uh, Kenneth Branagh doing the pre- their previous installment from this series called uh, Murder on the Orient Express, which is obviously probably the most famous of the Agatha Christie stories. At least, as, you know, I, I have limited knowledge as far as the books and everything. Uh, I, I got I sent a couple of messages to people talking about this movie, uh, where they saw it on my Instagram that we mm-hmm. were going to talk about this movie, and they wanted to know how it uh, how it fared next to the uh, to the like the BBC series from like the eighties all the way into the nineties. Like there's like, right. there's like a gazillion seasons of it. Uh, and I was like, I can't, I have no way to make judgment on that. I've seen murder on the orange express. I ha- I'm not, I'm ashamed to say I remember very little of it. It was mm-hmm. a long time ago. Uh, but so it stars Kenneth Branagh as Hercule Perot. Uh, it stars Tom Bateman as how did you pronounce it? What? Boke. Book? I thought he said book, okay. Uh, But Brian nailed it down because we're figuring out downstairs. Can you pronounce it, Brian? Oh, I didn't. I didn't nail this one down. Yeah, you did. I said you have to. Like, how do you say um, Perry? I have no. I can't. I can't say it even after all the translation helps. It's It's fine. It French has, is a very difficult language sometimes. It has rust. Yeah, I don't think any of us here can sound cocky enough to be French. Can you personally. sound cocky and snobby? Of course I can. That's not very French, though. That was more Valley Girl. No, no yeah, he did a, a Valley Girl thing, <laughs> okay, but that's fair. it's so, funny. So we've got um, we've got Russell Brand plays Windlesham, uh, and then the funny thing is, is okay, we're gonna we should probably address it right off the bat. This movie has Army Hammer. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I feel like you have to address the uh, the kind of elephant in the room. Did you do any research into what I told you about him? Uh, yes, it looks. No, like, I'm not going to uh, research uh, that uh, on well, my. Mm-hmm. You know, work okay, computer. so it has. Do it in it, secret. You mode. literally have to go down here. Uh, if you, it's funny. If you're looking, mm-hmm. uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you go all the way down here. These literally these buried in like the bottom of the cast list down here. I, I think they did that in order of appearance. Uh, th- this eh, it could no because uh, right because when I'm looking at IMDb, it's, it's oh yeah because there's the there's the um, it's prequel listen, scene the, exactly okay, um, but he's down here mm-hmm. and he plays. <laughs> Simon, what was his last name? I, I, Doyle. I, I say. Doyle. Simon, Simon Doyle. Uh, Windlesham is played by uh, Russell Brand. That is uh, the main character, played by Gal. G- one of the main characters, played by Gal Gadot, mm-hmm. her, whose name is Lynette Ridgway. That's his her ex fiance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm literally trying to go down here. And then in this movie, the love interest of Army Hammer early on is uh, Jacqueline de Bellefort. De Bellefort? Did I say that right? De Bellefort. Um, I don't know. Names are my weak point. And played by Emma M- Emma Mackey, who is really just uh, uh, slightly younger, slightly less noticeable Margot Robbie, if mm-hmm. you ask me. That's just my personal opinion. Well, I think Margot Robbie is kind of better looking. No you think offense. She, she's prettier? Yeah, we had this argument in the movie theater. Okay. I said Margot Robbie is a little bit more attractive. She, she, she I mean, she, I, I see them as being so similar that I'm having a hard time. Well, the only reason why a lot of people mistaken her for Margot Robbie. They're the same face, They're the same mouth, and the same chin. <laughs> so okay, we, never mind. We've got, uh, so we've got um, Sophie Akinado. Uh, Okanedo and then as uh, Rosalie Otterborn mm-hmm. and we have uh, Letitia Wright I'm literally trying to go through all of these names like and it's mm-hmm. all well, mixed the, up uh, yeah, they Rosalia don't have Rosalie Osborne is Letitia Wright 
No, no, that's the Rosalie Osborne, Otterborn is uh, Rosalie Otterborn is Letitia Wright, and then the, what, what was the one I just said? Sophia Salome. Salome. Uh, Salome. 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 Salome Otterborn is played by Sophie Akinado. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. uh, I'm exactly. like I'm like literally trying to go. So this this is your main cast along mm-hmm. with Annette Benning as Euphemia Boke. Did we we never is it Boke or is it Book? You just it's call it Boke. I like Boke. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then Rose Leslie as Louise Bourget. Uh, so there's all these characters in here, and I had a really hard time. Like one of the the hardest things about this is is it's a very very um ca- it's very very ensemble heavy, mm-hmm. meaning that the the movie gets going very 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 slow. Uh, basically, the idea is that you have to get to know these characters to care about them, uh, I, which is what I'm guessing the storytelling element was. Uh, and to have you start trying to keep mental notes of where everyone was at what specific time to make the murder mystery aspect of this movie work. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. It makes sense, but totally unnecessary. To, well, to do it without constantly having to do flashbacks, which oddly enough, they didn't do very many of, which I enjoy. I don't like I, it when they do yeah, a lot of flashbacks because I feel like that insults the audience's but intelligence. But then again, you don't need flashbacks no. either for this particular movie. I also, there, there was also, like you said, there was a... a uh, Book ends, two bookend scenes in this movie that I really don't think they needed at all, which was the story of how um, uh, Perot damages his face, damages mm-hmm. his face, which leads him, lends him to grow the mustache, uh, which brings up his wife, uh, or you know his um, ex love interest or who who died, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that he talks about uh, from the hospital, uh, and then that kind of bookends to a scene at the end with Otterborn, and I, I don't really think that scene needed to no. be in there at I think all. It's- something to get us to that two hour and 15 minute mark. But, yep. but I mean, two hours would have been perfect. Like I think that yeah. what I loved about this movie is this, uh, I, I, when they asked me, I said, what do you think, think this movie is going to be about? I said, I bet you it takes a, a long time to get started and then it will be much better once that goes on. Once, once you get through that opening period. And that's exactly what it was. Once they got down to starting the investigation part, this went very, very fast. Are you looking something up? Yeah, I'm because there's a couple of points that I wanted to bring up okay, that go like ahead. historical. No, no, no. So basically, what mm-hmm. happens here is Gal Gadot's character. Mm-hmm. Where I'm going to try and give a, be- a brief synopsis of it. Uh, Gal Gadot uh, is introduced to Army Hammer's character. I'm just going to call them by their acting names. Maybe, <laughs> that's a, uh, is introduced to Army Hammer's character uh, through his uh, love interest, played by Emma Mackey. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm making sure I'm saying it was Emma, right? It was Emma Mackey. Yeah, yep. Emma yes, Mackey. So Emma. De, De Bellafort is introduced to <coughs> Simon. Uh, Simon uh, Doyle. Oh, so, Doyle, yeah, right? Simon Doyle. Okay, yeah. so so Simon Doyle and Jacqueline De Bellafort mm-hmm. are very very passionate lovers. This is done by the most ridiculously over the top dance that mm-hmm. you will ever see in the history of the world. Too sexualized, uh, in my opinion. No, uh, it's too sexualized, and like if you do it historically, they don't do that. Um, we discussed this in the car. During that time period, uh, they wouldn't allow dancing like that. The only personal before contact. We, before we, mm-hmm. I was say, we're going to talk spoilers. Yes. I, I just want to give people, I, I'm. Oh, yeah. We're yes. going to be talking uh, about I, 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 Yeah. So, okay. So, keep going. So, spoilers. Yeah. So, um, basically, dancing, like, when you dance with a, a woman and a man, like, two opposite sex, like, during that time period, it's very cordial. And, like, the closest thing is maybe her breast touching your chest. That's it. Mm-hmm. But this is where, like, it's very modern like it has a lot of modern dancing where she's grinding on him and she's like almost doing like a a tiny twerk yes yeah it's vi- i mean uh, but here's why i mm-hmm. think this is important do, do we just do, do we spoil the ending right away and just tell them no what no, 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 no 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 we have to okay, gradually then, then what go. i'm going to say is that this dance in my mm-hmm. opinion the it, the intensity of it is important and i'll explain mm-hmm. at the end why i think that but is. then um mm-hmm. galica dot so, dances with him and she has her cooter on his face <laughs> yes okay <laughs> thank you for that yeah uh, but basically uh de bellafort uh jacqueline mm-hmm. uh asks uh, uh what's galica dot's character freaking a uh what's that character's name lana no 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 lene thank Linnae. you so um s- and it's jacqueline asks lene to hire her new fiance um, Simon to work for her company, right? Yes. And so yes. then what happens is then she says, well, uh, 
dance with her, I guess, to say thank you for hiring me for a job. And then they, and then they have their dance. Um, and like I said, I'm going to come back to this scene at yes. the end when we explain it. Um, from there, we go out to, uh, uh, it's like six weeks go by, mm-hmm. right? Six weeks, and now we are in Giza. Yeah. And Perot is in front of, um, what was it? The What pyramid Ram- is it? Oh, um, Ramsey? it's... No, no, no! It's not Ramsey. It, it is, is the, the Sphinx. The Sphinx. Um, Sphinx. 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 Sorry, I Sphinx. C- I can't word right now. It's really late for us, and the three um, pyramids also. Yes. So this leads to him meeting with Boke, and mm-hmm. uh, he talks to Boke for a while, and talks to Boke's mother. From there, they get on the. They no, they go to the the now now they go to an engagement dinner where we find out that uh, Lene is it Lynette or Lene. It's Lene for okay. French, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, Lene. So Lene is now engaged to Simon. Mm-hmm. And they are, and you know, they, they've been going on this whirlwind honeymoon. Or not, I'm just sorry, they're married now. They're not. Yeah. They, so they're on this whirlwind honeymoon. Uh, and uh, Jacqueline, I keep yes. wanting to call her Sophie. Uh, her j- name is not Sophie. J- j- yeah, Jacqueline. Um, Brett is the skull. Rename all I'm, the characters. Well, I feel because I need to, I, I'm going to have to keep consulting the cast list. Yes. Um, just leave it open, and then if you forget, you can just look at. I'm the gonna cast have to list. keep. I'm gonna have to keep re- referencing the cast list, and mm-hmm. I wish it wasn't in order of appearance. Uh, but okay, so from there, uh, so, not Sophie, uh, Jackie Jacqueline follows them around through this whole ordeal, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, as uh, through their engagement, and is just basically there to leer and ruin the mood and stalk mm-hmm. and stalk, basically being uh, a creeper. And uh, this is where, and before this, we are introduced to Letitia Wright, to her character, to Rosalie and Salome in the in the rest, or I'm sorry, in the dance club mm-hmm. earlier on. Where see, we're getting all out of order. I don't like going through an order of this. I just want to talk about what you guys thought of the movie because mm-hmm. it's it's so hard to. I, I with mean, a we cast, could we could speed it up, right? W- so we could. On on. So, so okay, so now we'll, we'll go straight forward to now they're on the boat, right? Right. And on the boat, we uh, find out that. Uh, do you want to? Does anybody want to cut in here and try to do more than me? Because I'm trying. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, we're, I'm here. So uh, Brian, go ahead. So Jacqueline. Emma mm-hmm. McKay decides to just show up on the ship randomly. Yeah. So they're on yeah. this ship uh, called the well, Car- the Carnac, the Carnac, the Carnac. But before that, they're at Ramsey's tomb, and Galica Dot and what's Simon his? Doyle, Simon, Simon Doyle. Um, they have a little rendezvous outside of the tomb, and then there's a rock that almost hits them, and. Galaxy Dot talked to who's the guy that's the investigator or detective? Perot. Perot. Um, she said, I don't feel safe. Yes. I don't feel safe at all. And basically, um, they go back to the ship and that's where they see Jackie in now country. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So she is a crazy um, person. Anyway, <laughs> uh, she's a yeah. stalker. So it goes on during that night mm-hmm. where she confronts um, Army Hammer's character Simon and basically takes out her pistol and shoots him in the leg and the first thing I thought when I saw it was they didn't put a lot of blood on that I remember yeah yeah uh, I was like but I, I was like I feel like there would be why. yeah and, and so I'm I, and from there that becomes a clue later on um, and then the next morning we find out that uh, Lene has mm-hmm. been killed yes uh, so Gal Gadot is early on I mean, fairly early on. In the yeah, movie. yeah. I mean, um, so I, I don't know if it was uh, necessarily a, a bait and switch, but she was heavily involved in the in the promotion for this material. Mm-hmm. A lot of it because Army Hammer had his whole incident. Uh, I, I'll just draw attention to this article where it says Disney proceeds with Death on the Nile to spark Army Hammer uh, scandal. So that mm-hmm. was a huge part problem with the marketing. I rewatched the trailer before we went into this, and literally he's got in three shots, and in every other shot where he's in there. Gal Gadot's head's like blocking him Mm -hmm. Uh, like so he they're very careful to make sure you see almost none of him in any of the promotional material after the scandal came out what was the scandal Uh, you want to hear about okay so uh, so, it it says director Kenneth Branagh's mystery thriller Death on the Nile is finally leaving port in preparations for a Valentine's Day weekend opening Uh, and it says it's been almost a year since multiple women accused Hammer of emotional abuse manipulation and coercion in April a woman who gave her name only as Effie accused Hammer of rape Hammer denied the allegations but was dropped from his agents at William Morris and withdrew an, from a number of movie and television products including uh, Jennifer Lopez's Shotgun Wedding and the Godfather TV series at Paramount Plus. 
Death in the Nile had been done for, some, for more than a year when the troubling allegations arose, leaving Disney in a tough position. The release of the movie, which was originally set to hit cinemas in 2020, had already been delayed mm -hmm. by COVID, and Disney considered several options when the ac accusations broke regarding Hammer. Uh, and says, including reshooting the movie with a new actor, replacing Hammer. That would have been impossible. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. he's literally like uh, one of the first thing that my my friend Brent asked me. Um, he goes, is he goes is uh, is uh, Creepo Hammer in the movie a lot? I'm like, yeah, he's in it a little bit, like every scene. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, like almost uh, like uh, is like is like oh how important? I'm like kind of important. Yeah. Um, so basically, so once Gal so once Lynette has or Linne has been murdered, then he sa they set to starting to ask Perot to uh, figure out who killed her. Mm -hmm. He starts his interrogations of the various uh, of the various suspects. There's also the I'm not even going to try to remember their names. There's communist lady who, uh, who who talks about how oh she's uh, she's Lynette's godmother. Also lesbians, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, uh, but you don't find that until later when they get investigated. So so, uh, so she has her <laughs> okay. she has like a uh they call her like a maid but it turns out to be her love interest but the, what? the um isn't she also a wet nurse or a nurse well maid yeah there was something I, along those lines I, I just don't really understand that storyline felt very studio yeah, forced. They, they, mm -hmm. yeah it was forced like the studio is like, like can you include this in there somewhere like the first thing the i communism as well like, no i thought that was beautifully done yeah. because it, first of all it makes her annoying and that's the point she's supposed to be annoying uh, all these characters have their flaws so it's not like they were doing it like it was some great thing so she's like uh, they're mm -hmm. like she gave away so this character who plays Lynette's uh, godmother gave away her fortune she goes you gave your entire fortune to the socialist party she goes no the communist party oh. And she goes, and people like this are going to be sadly mistaken when the revolution happens. And then later, when she's going through her interrogation, Perot even like makes a, like takes a dig at her economic fantasies, yes, mm -hmm. which yes, was hilarious did. to see her kind I, of. I forget get what he says exactly. Something about her. Yeah, he's like, yeah, it's even more like outlandish than your economic fantasies. Yeah, it's, it's really like funny, uh, but it's like the, I don't think that it's bad because it was the thirty, it was the late thirties. It fits within the it timeline fits, yeah. of the of the story, right? Uh, it also speaks to the kind of uh, she uses the term bourgeoisie oh <laughs> she, yeah she, uh, yeah so it, it it fits with the character the the mm -hmm. lesbian storyline felt very very well, studio also, note ish mm -hmm. and also that time period they frown upon like lesbian yeah. couples also another um unrealistic thing yeah mixed race couples don't exist during that time uh, i'm sorry i don't know if it was it was a it could have been was it different in france i'm not a history buff it was so. in france though no, no, yeah, but American, it, right? Um, yeah. So basically, uh, Letitia. No, she, he, she's talking about when they were at the nightclub. At the nightclub, they're at. Yeah. I I forgot where. They I don't had. think it's important. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't think it's important. Uh, it no, doesn't. Really, I don't it didn't affect. Well, wrong. for me, it's not wrong, but like still, like if you want to do like a a uh, piece uh, that's about World War One, like after, yes. like can you do it a little bit more accurate? That's, what do you mean? Well, she's saying mm -hmm. that it's not accurate to the time to have the couples like that. Yeah, the couples. I don't know about that. Yeah, they I, can I do no it idea. secretly because, like, I feel like it's very studio pushed. Because, well, that's the thing. Because, like, the, the maybe this is yeah. it's not important to, to the yeah, story. Yeah, it's so, not. But that's uh, a, a little editorial. But thing. um, so I will say that my favorite parts of the story is I think it was very. I, I think the movie was beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think it was very very strong in the visual departments. There were some scenes where they clearly had to use CGI against a lot them. of scenes. Yep, that, I noted that. that I was like, was blended well enough through the uh, the heavy saturated color palette that it didn't bother me as much as it would have if it had been uh, shot at night and done desaturated to uh, make it less obvious, which, if you're in the know, makes it more obvious. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man No Way Home, the entire last scene, the last scenes always take place at night because it's easier to do gra those types of visual effects at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that stuff didn't bother me. Uh, and the visuals of, like, uh, is th this is in Egypt? Mm -hmm. It is in Egypt. Egypt. Okay, yep. beautiful. Uh, uh, the shots that they did that were real uh, looked beautiful. The two there, the pyramids looked qu a little fake mm -hmm. in the beginning. Um, and then, the, where do you want to go? From, uh, where do we go from here in the story? Like, what was the next thing that you thought about? More uh, death. That, More death. So then we lose um, the maid. The maid. We we lose uh, Lynette's maid. I'm gonna go between Lynette and Lynette because I can. Yeah. We, well, I thought they pronounced it Lynette in the movie. Okay. So I think. Did she get sucked up in that uh, in the wheel? The in the wheel well, they of threw the her in. They cut up her neck. So spoilers. Um, basically, somebody slashed her neck, and there's blood splatter on the wall. She, like, 
but they found her body because like they're just talking randomly and then a foot hits the glass and, and they and see cracks the glass yeah and they see it and they're like um time of death is like maybe an hour or two hours mm-hmm. and like they said slash the throat there's money that's covered with blood but and it feels like somebody threw her in there to try to get rid of the body but she got caught up with the wheel like mm-hmm. just throw over uh-huh. yep. yeah it, it, it would have made more sense if they threw her but it's just yeah. sort of story plot I, this reason this is what it is yeah, yeah. So he's con- is. he continues his interrogations he interrogates everyone mm-hmm. including uh his friend Boke, mm-hmm. who uh by the way was in murder in the orient express so he's yeah. not a first time character uh, that character was in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so from there, they, they do this, and then there is a, a scene where they find out that a necklace belonging to Lynette is missing, mm-hmm. uh, and that shows up in Boke's mother's uh, study yes. uh, on the ship. But she says, like, I thought you're the world's greatest detective, but I found this. Yes, which mm-hmm. make, which is immediately supposed to make you feel uh, suspicious of her. Yeah. Because you're like, uh, that's that would be very clever of you to mm-hmm. steal it and then reveal it yourself. Yeah, but uh, later you find out, um, what's his name, Boak? Bo- I, 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 I can it call is it. Boke. Okay. Let's Boke? Just call it Boke. Okay, so yep. Boke um, gets investigated and basically... Him and Simon together. Yeah, Simon's there also. I don't... It's kind of weird, but whatever. Simon's there in the investigation. He wants to find out who murdered his wife. Yes. I say we just get to it and review it so we can just talk about our general thoughts. Yeah. Okay, so we come down to it Mm -hmm. and he locks everyone in the study, in the main main hall of uh, of the ship. This is my favorite scene in the movie where he reveals how he did it, uh, how he figured out who it was, and it is revealed to be... Simon. Simon. And, and Jackie. And yes, Jack. Jacqueline. Okay, uh, together. And now this is why I'm saying that their dance was important. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when we see this scene at the beginning mm-hmm. where he has this extremely passionate dance, mm-hmm. Simon and Jackie, yeah. Jacqueline, have this extremely passionate dance, and then he dances with Gal Gadot where there's the scene where, yes, she puts her... Cooter. Hoo-hoo in, her, in his face. <laughs> but there isn't even close to the same level of passion and connection yeah. between those two as there is between him and the first girl. So yeah. when they come out and he's suddenly married to uh, Lynette, I'm like, I don't buy it. Yeah, of course. Th- yeah. That's so, how we knew it but, was her. So, and, so um, that was extremely smart directing because they had to make the Jacqueline Simon dance scene over the top mm-hmm. to show that these two are just crazy enough yeah. to attempt to get all of, uh, and so the, it's revealed that they do this as a plot together mm-hmm. to get uh, Lynette's money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, uh, so he marries Lynette and then they kill her so that they can live with her money and it's revealed that she did this because he felt that he couldn't live without the money mm-hmm. and she felt that she couldn't live without him which is extremely romantic in eh. a psycho Psychotic. in a psycho yeah. murder sort exactly. of way oh which, my god this could be the next Joker and Harley Quinn story that's I mean maybe that's why they hired a woman who looks like Margot Robbie who plays Harley Quinn mm-hmm. uh-huh. but it's the opposite the girl that looks like Margot Robbie is actually Joker, yes, to a certain extent, yes, and then Simon is supposed to be Harley Quinn. This is a big stretch. Oh, also, yeah, that's also she comes up with the plan, not him. Mm-hmm. That of is, course, it's the way it works. Yes, yeah. Um, so I, I mean, he is, but it, it's in character because he's portrayed as kind of just yeah wishy washy and mm-hmm. not much of anything. Yeah, but like, also it's like another job that and like basically behind any great man is a. Greater woman, please tell. Was that was that was that the feminist line that yes. you heard while I was in the bathroom? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think it was actually. It right. was a, a feminist line. It was it in the movie. I heard it like growing up Got a because. Friend. It's okay. You yeah. Can get rid of him. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, I heard it from my grandmother. You can name that that one Simon in honor of the movie. S- bye, Simon. You will die. Yes. I don't know when. Um, so <laughs> Sorry. There's, uh, there's also there's a great uh, gr- now that we've gotten through the big reveal we can just talk about our general thoughts mm-hmm. Letitia Wright was my favorite character in this yeah. movie her and her mom were my favorite characters that's her mom movie. no it's her, her, her aunt. aunt her aunt yes yes uh, those, the, the actress who plays uh, Sophie uh, who plays Salome I keep calling her uh, no we haven't really yeah. so Sophie Okinado Okinado is fantastic in this I love movie. her character I love her and then I also um, love um the detective uh perot Kenneth perot i, I can't Kenneth remember Brana. his name we're gonna call him inspector gadget from now on so <laughs> inspector jet he, he absolutely like i i don't say that i don't want to say he doesn't own the role yeah but for instance they talk about how um 
how uh, much of a how braggadocious he is and how mm-hmm. full of himself he is. That doesn't really come off. Like they make a couple of references to it yeah. where he talks about how great he is, mm-hmm. but it's not like. But then certain people call him out for it as if he says it all the time, and yeah. I don't feel like that ever came across. I think it's like three or four, three times. Yeah, maybe. at mm-hmm. the most. Where and if anything, other people talk about him being the world's greatest detective more than he does. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they they keep talking about it's weird that we have the world's greatest detective on this on this cruise, and it's also revealed that. That, um, he's on this ship because uh, Boke's mother wanted him to investigate. Uh, um, si- uh, not Simon. Um, Sal- Salome. 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 S- s- the, but uh, Rosalie. So uh, God, I, yeah. oh, there's so many names. Yeah. Here. So mm-hmm. uh, Boke's mother wanted uh, Perot to investigate Rosalie, who is in love with who's in love with Boke. They're uh, both in love with each other, in love and with one another another thing like they're supposed to get engaged and he wanted to get the engagement blessed by his mom yep. but Where's his yeah. yeah but the whole um thing with like stealing the necklace because he felt like he wasn't financially like stable enough to give what rosalie wanted in life or what she deserved or so we didn't we didn't talk about that yeah so that's something that we so know. basically um broke right Book. His, book. Book. I can't get these names maybe, right. Maybe that's what Rosalie called him when she was pissed at him. She's like, whatever, broke. <laughs> Why don't you go steal your mom's necklace? Yeah, so... Um, that's my Letitia Wright uh, impersonation. So basically his character, even though he comes from a well-off family, his uncle, he tells the whole story, his uncle cut him off and all he has is his mom. Yep. And But his mom wants, to, wants him to do more of his life. But he no, I feel like the mom wants him to be around her. Never it's mind, creepy uh, Norman Bates shit. Uh, that's true, but he didn't I have. I kind of get that. that I mean, vibe it, from her it's actually, not, yeah, like it's, like she she's very. It's a it's a very codependent relationship, mm-hmm. and so and she's very very uh, um, down and out on the idea of love and marriage. Love oh, because and marriage, exactly love and <laughs> that marriage. That show when it, that she's been that's hurt. the renew- yeah. yeah the the mom's been hurt, so she's hesitant. Now here's where they could have played up mm-hmm. the racial uh, animosity, and they didn't, which I will give them credit for here. Props. It became it it, it was mentioned by. Um, um, by the by the mom by, mm-hmm. or by the aunt a few times but never heavy handed never uh, I, I enjoyed that like I give these movies these days a lot of credit when they don't when they, when it could be done there and it doesn't this although thing. it probably was if, if this actually was a documentary on something that happened it probably would have happened which, it which is right. why yeah. I will give them credit when, yeah. when they don't do that because it honestly it didn't need it Right? Nope, it didn't. Mm-hmm. It also necessary. didn't need all the you know heavy-handed sexual content in the beginning. See, I That's think true. that that was important. I, well, I, really I like your um, your explanation um, is good. Yeah, your explanation. It and shows you that they're nuts. They're doing it in. Pu- they're basically yes. doing it in public. They're planning. They're that ca- was their planning. So, or not necessarily. The plan planning. was already in motion. Yeah, executing. Their also, planning. I do yep. want to point out that I did notice there is a bit of a logical flaw here. That when this happens, when uh, Simon and Lynette. Or I'm sorry, Simon and Jacqueline are having yeah. their their uh, freaky dance. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and they set up Lynette. Yeah, Hercule Paro just happens to be there, watching even the though whole when thing. He, even though when he's there later, it's at the behest of Boke's mother, wait, wait, wait. which yes, are not connected. Right. So no, that is a that wait. is a leap. No, 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 no. It's not a leap. It's actually him, like solving the mystery. So like it's kind of like the mystery hasn't happened. No, yet. No, no, yeah. no. This is another big stretch thing where like. Even he though, called it the first act. Yeah, he of, called it the first act yeah. where he's walking um, basically through the steps right. of like the whole thing, like how the murder stepped out. Maybe th- it's a big stretch, but think about it. Maybe he never met her beforehand. If Boke had been at the nightclub when mm-hmm. all this happened was around... Was he not? He was. He was I don't think I no, saw No, he, he wasn't was there. If Boke had been at the nightclub around Rosalie, then... I could have bought it. But the mom specifically says, I asked you to come here to investigate these two together. So there is a logical flaw there as to why he just happened to witness the two. So you could have almost not had him. In well, that, would, it, would it have made any, would it have mattered if he had even been there at the nightclub? Well, also the nightclub was known for seven different desserts. That's I why he was. No, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have mattered. It mm-hmm. wouldn't have mattered. He because, still would have figured uh, it out the same. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, Lene would have, told uh you know what's his name shuckles uh We're gonna call inspector him gadget <laughs> about <laughs> perot <laughs> yeah perot whatever i don't know if that's his real name but i really do feel like whenever the french actors and actresses in the movie say his name they're bragging yeah like, they, 
Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> anyways, like, anyways. Um, no, I'm I'm just saying like she would have explained the whole situation with her sister. Like she's a crazy, <clears throat> you know, yep. psychopath at this point. Just sister cousin. Him. Exactly. So I, like, I'm just saying. Like, I know you guys had mixed feelings about this movie. Yeah. I had a very good time. Uh, maybe it's because I didn't have like the highest of expectations. Maybe it's because I'm a big fan of Kenneth Branagh's work as a director, mm-hmm. uh, and I had kind of mentally prepared. Harry Potter. I had kind of I had mentally prepared myself Mm -hmm. for it to be slower at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm also a huge fan of the show Wallander, which is so slow and depressing that you literally need a Prozac prescription to get through it. It's a it's like a Scottish uh, detective drama in which he stars as the I think it's Scottish. Oh, okay. Uh, And it's as and it's as depressing as you. It might not. I could. I'm probably (laughs) being fact checked right now in the Scottish part. It's been Mm -hmm. years since I've seen it, but it was very good. But it was also very slow, Mm -hmm. as is a lot of British television. And it's more story driven mm-hmm. and it's not as fast paced as American entertainment tends yeah. to be. Uh, and I just love Kenneth Branagh, so this worked for me. Mm hmm. Um, I do think it's funny here like and this is the original poster from the movie and you see uh, Simon Doyle like right there uh, it, there's so many we didn't even really get into the fact that Russell Brand is in this movie yeah. for like a hot minute but not he's not a super important character he was he's supposed got, to be the ex love interest he was Lynette's ex fiance who she yeah. left uh, and he like he admits that he loved her, and then yes, there's well, all. This everyone thing. had their motives in this movie, for yeah. Sure. And, and that's explained by saying yeah. it's like you specifically invited everyone you knew had a, a motive to kill Lynette exactly. Yeah, to that this was the point. <laughs> engagement. Basically, that's very clever. Yeah, basically, our coworker Sarah explains this movie in one big whole summary. It's like a game of Clue, but like yeah. who done it. That's it's mm-hmm. th- that's literally the name of the genre. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a whodunit. That's the whodunit. whole point. Whodunit. I know of, what you did last summer. You put a bunch of, <laughs> you put a bunch of people into an enclosed space. You don't let them out, and then yeah, and it was. I I I really enjoyed this. Like now, like I said, I'm maybe it's just because I'm a fan of everyone's got their niche. Everyone's got their specific genres that speak to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one, uh, for me at least, other than the fairly slow pacing in the beginning, and other than the bookends of the uh, of the m- mustache at the beginning, and or not having the mustache at the beginning when he gets injured, uh, and then suddenly cutting it off at the end when he goes yeah. to see uh, his. I, I I didn't really understand. Maybe it's Rosalie, important for the next one. Rosa, I'm going to remember this. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to remember that damn aunt's name. Rosalie and Rosalie Otterborn. and Salom. 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 Oh, God. Salom. Hey, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, so he goes to see. Basically, there's this weird also sub story where he flirts with Salom. And, or more accurately, Salom flirts with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, throughout the movie and she's fond uh, she's clearly fond of him and uh, she's glad to have seen him work uh, but I really do think that her Salome and Rosalie are the standouts to me in this yep. movie uh, because they just had more charisma than than a lot of the other actors and actresses uh, Kenneth Branagh does the role very well he does that character a fair amount of what I would assume justice but i'm not an aficionado on uh, agatha christie books or mm-hmm. or the character but i do love uh, a good kind of he, he does the performance fairly subtly he, yeah it's not like he's like walking and flourishing and stuff like that right it's it's a fairly subdued performance it's just very it's, it's a, a good it, subdued performance exactly in my opinion. so i i was a big fan there's oh there's there's rosalie and uh salome in the back i finally remembered it salome. well salome is more prominent than i mean not salome salome is more in the back but rosalie is more prominent yep, in the front right there foreground um it's just i had a lot of fun at this movie there's uh, there's other st- subplots there's the there's the banker dude who mm-hmm. i I, fr- I don't even know that guy's name and he kind of plays a role where he agrees to pay back the money that he stole he apparently is the cousin Oh, well, yeah. like friend, like he's a friend of a family, but they grew up together, so, so they just call him yeah. calls, uh, cousin. So, I, guys, I don't know if you're like uh, if if uh, if you're like me or Miracle, who mm-hmm. can watch spoiler reviews and then still go see movies. Because to me, I'm psychotic. Uh, I don't really do that as much now because I try to avoid. I, I don't have the time. Mm-hmm. Not only yeah, do I not yeah. have the time, but I find that if I, I watch a review of a movie before I see it and then, and then have to review it here, it colors my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I exactly. try to avoid all media. But before I did this for at work Mm -hmm. I didn't have a problem watching reviews beforehand because to me it's the journey of the filmmaking process like I said to me a lot of what spoke to me in this movie was the beautiful visuals Mm -hmm. was the saturated uh, colors and the way that the the 
the sun was shown uh, yeah. in the saturation. Like all of that really spoke to me. A lot of the background, it was really pretty. Yep. Um, costume designs. I was complaining about the females' costumes because it's not really accurate, especially like um, the guy that died. Um, what's his name? All of, there's so many. <laughs> uh, the the third murder. Um, Boke. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I can't remember his name for shit. Um, basically. <laughs> I don't like his jacket because, like, I felt like it was too like bright for a man. Uh, and Russell time. Brand's character mm-hmm. has like these uh, these vertical stripes. Has these extremely flamboyant suits the whole time that mm-hmm. I loved. He had this blue, like, uh, like deep blue suit with black stripes mm-hmm. that I just I was like, I couldn't wear that. I wish I w- <laughs> like I wish I could pull that off, but mm-hmm. Russell Brand can pull it off. Dude, Maybe Russell- back in the 1930s. N- and- yes. Um, yeah, but like. I don't know like for me I'm just picky about that because like um as especially Emma the actress Emma like her clothing was too modern like she wore this white shirt that was like more cashmere and it looks like something that uh generation Z girl will wear well yeah that means the styles come back around you do know that style that you're not inventing anything right I every kn- style is cyclical exactly I know but like I feel like it's not and then I just searched up like uh fashion styles from, from the there. 1930s they're not like that well, i mean it's it's also a movie you have to give mm-hmm. some yeah. this isn't supposed to be i'm it, picky about it as as historically accurate as we would like it to be mm-hmm. the stories themselves have to have flights of fancy otherwise the visual style of this movie wouldn't work with well no completely like the accurate costumes well like how Letitia's right character like they did wear clothes like that yes so you can still be fashionable like that but a, a lot of it wasn't like during that time period so that's why it kind of like made me more picky about it there's a lot of youtubers that will edit it like edit it and show you how they should wear their clothes back then like this one girl who wears a corset and dresses up like a victorian um sometimes girl. they just don't have the budget for that that's true this movie had the budget for it. this is a if it's a <laughs> they can afford film, they, had, they had to pay for all the cgi yeah i see i didn't i didn't it didn't bother me as much uh maybe it's because i was immersed in the dialogue uh but uh there's let's see it's, i'm it's, a visual creature although probably going to you know Egypt during the pandemic is not a well this, yeah. was, best filmed, idea. this was filmed before the pandemic e- was it yes I'm uh sure. So, so the, yeah, it doesn't have the budget list this year, but I think I saw it somewhere. It said like it was like 120 million. Um, <laughs> that uh, was adorable. Uh, so it, it's I I enjoyed it. I, mm-hmm. it's, let's let's see if there's any more of in the way of facts. I think I the it. mummy, that, that the 1999 <laughs> mummy, is like uh, it's around 100 million, mm-hmm. and it's so much better than this movie. It's true, and it's <laughs> funnier. Oh, uh, it says it's shot entirely on large format 65 millimeter film. That would have been extremely expensive to mm-hmm. do, uh, at least the development process in it. And not to mention, just being delayed that many times cost them a fortune. Of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're leaving money. Uh, they're literally losing money the longer this movie. The fact that this didn't get pushed to streaming sure. is insane. Mm-hmm. Given all of the fact that it's not a superhero movie, given the fact that it's... Uh, yeah, they took a lot of risks. A huge budget, given the fact of what happened to Army Hammer, this could have very easily just been dumped the frick to whatever streaming service was willing to buy. If it's a Disney, if it's a Disney owned company that made it, they could have sold this off to Amazon Prime for a pretty penny, uh, and it would have been fine. So, mm-hmm. uh, I I don't know. I liked it. Yeah, it's not bad. When did this uh, release? Was it? Did it just come out this today? Is, today was the like we made, we went to like a first show screening uh, in IMAX. Like there was four of us in the, in the yeah, theater. We yeah. weren't um, we weren't like given oh. special access. We bought we just got tickets yeah. for like I think that's becoming more. Co- I don't know how common this was before, but you get like a lot of like they're doing this for the Batman where you can get like uh, they'll do a day early screening, but it's IMAX. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yes. Well, also another. C- uh, thing so our movie was delayed because there was audio oh, 20 minutes yeah oh yeah there was audio problems and then like they tried to fix the audio it was working for a little bit but then the picture wasn't on and then we were left looking at a screen that said 20th century fox, fox for like 10 minutes <laughs> yeah i will s- i really do think one of the strengths of this movie is once they got through if you were able to gut out that slower part at the beginning mm-hmm. once the first murder happens it picks up and it takes off from there exactly yep. it, it turned into basically a different movie from the beginning yes mm-hmm. I'll uh, say, yeah and i do think that the reason they did that, that they built the characters up like that is to make you want you have to care about them and you have to at least know a little bit about them to be able to really uh try to 
pay attention to where they are, yeah. what their motives might be. To one, to to do something like this where motives are are uh, important, you yeah. have to uh, introduce the characters more thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, World War One scene. I thought that was done well in the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only but, problem is it just didn't fit with the rest no, of the movie. No, it kind of yeah, does did. fit. In my mind, it the, kind of it fits because it shows how like um, how well knowledge he is the detective. I guess that guy. part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it shows how well knowledge he is, he, he and he because he. The, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It, he basically tells like. Um, basically, it's time to attack now because if you look up, the birds are flying during an hour where it's less wind around and if we blow up the gas and do a sneak attack now it won't like basically disappear on us that quickly it will stay within and we can do our sneak attack i still don't know if it was necessarily required Mm -hmm. no because there's a whole other movie uh, you know what is it the murderer on the orient express it kind of Mm -hmm. yeah it it explains that he's a good detective you know yeah but i don't know how many books are there? Because I there's feel like... There's a lot. Uh, there's like lot. 34 or something. Or it's in the high 20s, early 30s, and then um, there's like 51. I, I didn't write it down, but yeah, mm. there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot. So maybe they might do it better next time. Or it just adds on to the next movie. Yeah. You know, you know. But uh, then again, I'd like to see like a you know feature length movie of just you know him and during World War One. Yep. Yeah, or we can just get a TV show series, get it done quickly. <laughs> okay. Well you, you, well, well, you can fund that, Mary. I'm going to email who? Disney? Yeah, uh, Disney. 20th Century Fox? Uh, there we go. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's 20th Century Studios, which means that it's now technically owned by Disney. Yes. Yeah. So As is everything. Yeah, Dis- exactly. Email Disney. Go like, Disney, you should make this into a series. Yeah, so Stop World wasting our time. Stop series on... And we're not going to vote for yeah, yeah. Bob Iger for president. We will not. Who's <laughs> Bob Iger? He's the old uh, CEO of Disney who wants to run for president. Oh, that's joyous. Captain Biathon. He just, he doesn't know how to, he just buys everything. He's do you like, think, how do I make a good company? I'll just buy Marvel and then I'll buy Star Wars and then well, I'll that's buy. How, that's how you just get rich. Yep. Yeah, and but I'll also, 20th Century Fox. imagine him running as president and he's like, how do I make a stronger country? Buy all of them I'll with just, no money. Yeah, we'll just buy other countries. Mm-hmm. So. I'm going to trade a paperclip for a house one day. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you guys, uh, so if you, if, uh, okay, um, Nerf gun to your head, do you give people a recommend or no? Uh, I feel like you can do a foul unless you like murder mysteries. Okay. Wait till it's out on, am, like, yeah, like, like I don't services. recommend going to the movie theater because there wasn't, unless you like to go to the movie theater like me. Yeah. Then like Brian up. enjoys it. And yeah. now we enjoy having Brian along. Oh. So he's going to be a part of the movie crew. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. We will be doing this more often. Yes. Yep. Uh, next, I believe, is Uncharted. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm I've, looking forward to that one. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm super excited because before that... And Batman we, as well. Yes. Yes, the Batman. That will probably be all of that. Like, the whole company will probably go mm-hmm. to, to that. So yeah. That'll yeah. be good. That'd be pretty awesome. Yep. It's going to be good. Yep. Okay, guys, th- that was fun. Thank, mm-hmm. uh, thank yeah. you guys for for coming with me and, and uh, bearing through. I, I thought I think I was the only one who was excited for this movie, and um, lo and behold, I was the only one who really loved. It. Oh, uh, you said uh, I, he said wait till streaming. You say you I can said, do without. You can do without it. I say go see it. Uh, you, uh, if you liked Murder on the Orient Express, go see it. Um, even if you didn't see Murder on the Orient Express in theaters, if you caught it on streaming, I do think it's worthwhile to go see this movie. If for no other reason than Kenneth Branagh does a really good job, Letitia Wright is rising as a star, mm-hmm. and, Gal Gadot, yes. and Gal Gadot is an absolute... Um, she's so pretty. She's a joy to behold on screen. There is a warmth to her charisma that is very, very hard to duplicate. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, that, is that uh, it factor. It's, uh, s- uh, what would the term for it be? It, it really is just it factor. You don't know what makes it work, right. mm-hmm. but it does. But uh, she always plays as the elegant type. She is elegant. Okay, despite okay. the fact that she was uh, an Israeli soldier. <laughs> Really? Really? Well, uh, everyone in the mil- in is Israel has to. It's conscripted military service. Okay. She oh. she was in the IDF for okay. two years. It's not special forces or anything like no, that. No, no. She, I think she's a fitness trainer. They said. Oh, so okay. that's important too. They're like you know, she's too pretty. I, I'm looking forward to seeing more Letitia Wright in s- movies because yeah. she's f- phenomenal in. Uh, so are you excited? The American Horror Story. Yes. There, and there was very little that I could find of the aunt, but she. I think she's mostly a stage actress. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing uh, musicals as well because she performed in this. Mm-hmm. I legit thought she was from American Horror Story. 
She is. Letitia Wright is. Letitia Wright? She was no, the, the aunt. The aunt. Oh, the aunt, I don't know. No, she is Letitia the, Wright. No, the no, the, the aunt. aunt. The aunt is the Sophie <laughs> is the Sophie lady. We can't remember names. No, I Le- Sophie. Uh, oh, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Starts with an O. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Letitia Wright. I don't know if Letitia Wright was in American Horror Story. No, Letitia Wright wasn't. She was in Wakanda. Wak- she, uh, she's from Black Panther. I, I am. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Wakanda. Sophia. What the? Sophia is in American Horror Story. Yeah, she plays let's, as. Let's, let's end this right now. Okay. Um, she plays as. Um, the basically she plays as a voodoo queen i think no no that's somebody else keep um, going um no what character did she play what season sh- was she from i don't remember i'm blinking oh she was from the freak show episode um season and she played as the woman who has both genitalias and the third boo oh yeah that's yeah <laughs> there's a weird scene in and that then after that she's in pretty much every uh, yeah american bec- horror story because that's what they did so like in the final um my notes were wrong Yes, you mixed up the name, but um, basically the season for uh, where they smash all the characters together. Oh my god, she was in the horrible movie Anne Flux. I love that movie. What's Anne Flux? A very bad movie. When was that made? Two thousand five. Wow. She was in After Earth. We won't hold that against her. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I guys, I give it a recommend. Mm. They're saying you can pass. You know, so that's, yeah, you know, it's a pass. One, so. But that's that's the beauty of it. You shouldn't always agree on all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I'm also very black pilled when it comes to movies. See, I'm the opposite. I, everybody else is. I'm black pilled when it comes to society as a whole. I tend to have a little bit more hope, even though I I call out the 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 politically correct bullshit when I see it. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I have a lot of fun watching these things because when they do it well, it reminds me of what it was like when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like, I guess that's eternal hope, right? You're just you're just hoping to be uh, surprised. Yeah. So for yeah. sure. All right, guys. Uh, Brian, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Yes, I'm only on Instagram right now. I'm OG Helmsway, and I post a bunch of pictures of my dogs and. Yeah, you know, dogs are beautiful. Stuff like that. Didn't you get increase the followers? Uh, yeah, actually, I mean, I'm yeah. So keep on following <laughs> him. Make him viral, you guys. Yes. Okay, Miracle. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? I don't have social media because it rots your brain. Okay, perfect, guys. Mm-hmm. You can follow me on Instagram at Brett Dasovic. Also, this is going to be posted on our YouTube channel, so mm-hmm. please subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate that very much. Like the video if you liked it. Uh, comment, leave, uh, tell everyone how I was right and how this was a good uh, movie, and they were their mediocre review. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm probably wrong. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm in the minority. That's fine. Well, you also leave- like Moonfall. I, Cast Castle Vlogs. Uh, <laughs> and then also, once you go to that, I want you guys to go uh, click in the description link to this video. What are you doing? Nothing. Okay. Go in the description <laughs> link, which will give you a uh, Spotify playlist to the entire pop culture crisis, uh, the entire library of podcasts, unabridged, start to finish the entire episode. We are not just on Spotify. We're also on Amazon mm-hmm. Music, Apple Podcasts. Pandora, and we are also, if you are, want to check us out on social media, make Dane very happy. Follow us on Twitter at popculture underscore show, and then also on Facebook and on Twitter at popculture pop, da, 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 at pop culture crisis. <laughs> we will be back with another episode tomorrow with a full episode for the podcast. We will see you then, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.